when I played around lastly with um, Azure VPNs, I just recognized that something is odd with the NS lookup tool on the Windows. Um, it's really, really strange. I uh, just as a quick uh, presume, I don't know the reasons exactly, but I got a little solution like thingy to present. So in this video, I will just explain what the problem is. And for that, I need to explain a little bit of what I did in Azure. If you don't interested in that, you can skip over. I will have a timeline down below. So you can skip directly to the solution or to the findings. And if you are interested in what I built in Azure, a point to site VPN to be in fact, then just follow along. And with that, I think I'm going to go uh, over to my screen here. Uh, so let's go. You uh, now see here uh, my current uh, blog, um, which where I have an article, I will put the link uh, down in the description. So uh, what this is telling you is what the situation was, how I built everything in Azure. So let's look here. So what it basically is, is it even loading? Yes. So what it basically is, is I have a SQL server in Azure down here. Um, so a SQL database, which is exposed uh, via private link. Um, and private endpoint and basically what my point is is normally this database in azure you need to open ports in order to access this for your ip address i don't want to do that instead of i will try to connect via a point to site vpn so it's just a secure tunnel that i have into azure um, or any other cloud for that reason and <clears throat> this thing is configured in a way that um, this virtual network where all this is included is basically giving me a custom DNS server. So how this all uh, is done and stuff like that, you can see it in uh, the description in the article. I'm not going to cover this in more detail, but at the end, what I expect to be able to do is to use uh, basically after I connected with VPN to just use the private IP address, which should be uh, 10004 uh, for accessing the SQL server as if the server is in my local network. That is the plan. So um, turns out it's uh, not so easy as it sounds, uh, but let me explain how it looks. So hopping over to Azure, <coughs> what you here see is basically the resource group I created. Uh, so in, in this resource group, a lot of stuff is going on, which is not so important. The basic important stuff maybe is the SQL Server itself later, uh, how it's configured, but this is about maybe another video. If you're interested in uh, this, how you can configure an Azure SQL Server using private endpoint, which was a lot of stuff to do, to be prepared like private DNS zones and DNS resolvers and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I uh, just uh, write me a command if you like to hear more about that. And I even did it with biceps. So it might be even more interesting to see it with infrastructure as code instead of clicking around in the portal. Just tell me. Anyways, so now the main uh, important component, let me go back to my, maybe to my blog article and click here. The most important component will be something which is called the gateway. So this thingy here lives in Azure and is kind the point where I dial into, if you will, when I do point to site connections. So this thing will decide um, where is um, uh, the, the routing, uh, where should it go, what IP addresses will be available and stuff like that. Okay, so um, what I will do now is I will go to this gateway here and what you will see here, if you go over to the point to site connections, which is exactly what I want to showcase here, is that point to site is enabled. It tells uh, Azure that whenever a client is connecting to this point to site connection, it will have an IPv4 address out of this space. So when I'm connecting my machine to um, this gateway, this gateway will give me this IP address, no matter what it is on my machine. Okay, so that's uh, interesting, maybe. So then he defines the tunnel type and he says the authentication should happen using uh, Azure Active Directory. This is not renamed to Enter ID yet here on this screen. Microsoft is in the process of doing that for all the resources, so expect it to change a little bit the window. But what it tells you basically is you can point to site using your Azure credentials to this thing. So in order to do that, you can click, first of all, this button here, 
uh, I will showcase this. This will take some while because it now needs to inspect the virtual network behind it to build up what they call a profile. Um, it's a single file and it's done now. Uh, let me go to my downloads folder here to show you this. This is what you get. Uh, it's kind of a zip file. Let me extract the zip file um, to my machine with 7-zip. Um, and then we can look at this. So this has uh, two folders and inside one of the folder is the Azure VPN config XML file. You can totally open this file and I'm not sure if there are any secrets involved. Let me quickly check here and scroll to the right position. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, I don't want to show this. Um, uh, you can watch it by yourself, but it's basically an XML file uh, and it tells you a lot of GUIDs, the service secret is there, stuff like that. That's why I'm not going to show this. Okay, so what do you do with this file? So there is a tool in the uh, Microsoft Store. Uh, let me see, can I go to the store? I'm not going there this often, to be honest. And let's search for, thank you for the advertisement. Um, let's search, 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 where search... I never get used to those UIs. Let me get rid of my back screen here. Where is search? Hmm. Can I control F? No apps, maybe. Uh, and can I can I search here for the better or worse? Interesting. Let me pause. Turns out I cannot. I don't know. Uh, so I gave up. I'm now heading over to the Microsoft Store, online, whatever. Uh, no, that's not this. Um, Apps.microsoft.com. And uh, let me see. So what I search for is Azure VPN. Uh, and then you get Azure VPN client. And this is exactly what you need to install. I already have installed it, but you know he does not know. He's completely lost. So whatever, uh, so what this is, is I have this here. This is my VPN client. And this is the connection I already imported by going to this button, hitting the add button. This is German, sorry. And then, um, uh, no, hitting the import button and then selecting exactly this config file, which I showed you in the download folder here. Okay, and then what you get is basically this. And this gives you uh, all the information. <clears throat> and all you need to do now is to connect to this thing. And I already connected to that. That's why he's not asking me for my credentials. Normally you would ask now for your Azure login and then you are connected. Basically, as soon as you have this tool installed, uh, the other way around would be to go to network uh, and to select here the VPN you want to be connected to. Anyways, I'm connected now. And we can prove that by, uh, let me open a terminal and let's see, um, <clears throat> IP config uh, dash all. And now what we will see here besides other stuff is uh, that we I have VMware installed. I have another VMware. I have this one. This is now exactly what it is. So here you see exactly this name of my VPN tunnel, point to site. And now you see that I actually got an IP address from that gateway out of the range 192.168.4, whatever, two is my current one. So <clears throat> everything is good. So now to the problem. The problem is what happens when I NS look up the SQL server name, which is exactly, let me show you in the portal, when I go back to my resource group, uh, okay, discard this. I didn't change anything, whatever. Uh, here, this thing. So I basically copy out, uh, this is a SQL server, correct? And then it's this server name here. I just copy this out and try to resolve its name to an IP address. And for doing this, I'm using NSLOOKUP. And what you can see here is that it is not doing it. It's simply not. Uh, so this is not the expected behavior. So watch what happens. Fun fact besides, if you do it in, let's say, Kali Linux on 
um, WSL on the same system. So let me do that. NS lookup. And do you have it? No, you, you haven't. I always struggle with this. Let me copy out this command and paste it in. So interestingly enough, it works. So this guy on the same machine to be not the same machine. It's uh, I know it's running in a box, but you know, it's network wise behind my uh, host network. So whenever I saw this because it's working on the Mac, you can download this tool, by the way, also for the Mac, the Azure VPN client and use it there with all the features and it works with like a charm, but it's not working under Windows 11 uh, on, in my case. So I was searching for this, I don't know, not for days in a row, but you know, it took me weeks or whatever to finally find uh, the solution for that. So it turns out, let me go to my profile here in the in VS Code and let me quickly put it away to show you. It turns out that if you use another tool, which comes with PowerShell, which is called um, uh, Resolve DNS name, instead of uh, this one, uh, resolve DNS name and then whatever this is, oh, wrong one, resolve, there it is, resolve DNS name, it's a PowerShell commandlet, I, I didn't touch anything else, he will give me the correct IPv4 address. Interesting. So, um, the most, I don't know, obvious thing I found is, that at some point in time, Windows started to bring a feature in, and I don't know actually what the concrete name is, bring a feature in which it, um, kind of weighs the different connections which you saw at ipconfig all, and says whenever I do IP address resolution, I will do something would I, which I would explain the best with something like least cost routing. So wherever I get the best results from, the fastest results, I guess, um, I will take that. So before I detected that this PowerShell thingy is doing it correctly, I thought, so maybe, oh, I follow the rabbit holes which provided by, uh, to me by the internet. So let me uh, share this with you. So um, uh, one of the rabbit holes was that it says, well, you know what, go to your system settings. <clears throat> and I'm, um, let me uh, let me see if I no I cannot find it. Let me open my notes real quick. I will be right back here. So uh, the advice was, hey, look at this one. NetSH interfaces IPv4 show interfaces. So what this gives you is it shows you uh, like all the network interfaces in one uh, nice list. There's a PowerShell command too, and then what you see is there is a metric here. This column. And um, one advice in the internet is, hey, change the metric so that your VNet blah, blah, blah is always on top of it. So be careful with that, because if you change the metric to a lower value and then you uh, stop and uh, restart your, um, uh, your connection, uh, then you get um, a new old metric. So uh, what this is, is if you go to the control center, the old one, I uh, know the uh, text here, you go to your network um, center and then you go to adapter settings. So you know probably this and now you can go here to say what are the properties here. You can go to network uh, IPv4 properties, sorry for the German, extended or advanced properties and then this box here if you uncheck it you can you could give it a value which is lower uh, than the 55 so that it has a default fixed metric so i thought well that's the solution nice so whenever i'm connected i will give it uh, whatever uh, let's say a 10 because it would be lower than every other metric and then it should work turns out it does not so that's the conclusion here. It does not help anything. Next rabbit hole was, well, you know what you need to do? You need to go to your group policy. Um, let me show you. It's not that um, 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 that helpful, I guess. Uh, GP edit. Um, that's it. 
it, because it's German here, but I will try to show you what, what I found. It's on administrative templates, network, and then DNS client. So this is German, I know. Uh, I definitely need to switch to an English Windows, I guess. But interesting part is that this one is pointing out to different stuff, um, which is, for instance, here, this LLMNR, Local Link Multicast Name Resolution. I think that's the culprit. I don't know. Uh, anyways, there are five options here, which some internet resources will tell you to disable by activating it. So deactivate it by enabling the group policy. Then, of course, you need to restart your machine and whatever. Turns out you don't need to do it. I did it for you. It's not working. It's not doing anything at all. It's not solving the problem. So, the only thing which actually solves the problem for me is to put this line. And let me copy it. To put this line. I know it's stupid. But let me CLS and then. So, to put this line into my profile. In other words... I'm not using NSLOOKUP anymore, so the, um, the built-in NSLOOKUP. I will use uh, the PowerShell thingy, the Resolve DNS name. Whenever I type NSLOOKUP, I will have this idea. So when I do this, and now NSLOOKUP, of course, will always use the PowerShell version of NSLOOKUP and give me this information. So that is my solution to this problem. It's not really a solution, I know. But I thought I should make a video out of it to tell my community that um, something is odd here and to not let you fall into the same trap. So I hope this helps um, and I will make hopefully more content like that if you like it. So let's see if you have some comments. Maybe somebody of you knows what happened uh, and what this actually is and if there are other solutions. But uh, currently this is a mess. Thanks for watching and see you next time.